Well, before I tell you what the best streaming media player out there right now is, quick update on uh, Cars News. Got a new microphone in, it's attached to the camera right now we're testing out. Um, to improve the sound quality right here of both these videos and reviews in general, it's a very nice, uh, expensive microphone, so hopefully that helps a lot. It's directional, it should really improve the sound quality. Um, I also am almost done unpacking, setting up, and building the new office. Uh, one person here, so between running the site and doing everything else, it's taken a little bit of time. But we're getting there, we got new lighting, new microphone, uh, some new setup, some other stuff coming soon. But I hope to have a video posted maybe this week, maybe next week, kind of depends on how the 4th of July affects my work schedule. Um, that will show you the new office and everything we're doing to help give you the best core cutting experience possible. Oh, so keep your eyes open on the YouTube channel. And if you haven't, hit subscribe so you never miss one of our videos over on YouTube. That helps us out a lot. More people subscribe, more people that give us thumbs up. It really helps us get the word out about cord cutting. Uh, well, let's dive into it. One of the questions I get all the time is, hey, I'm a new cord cutter, or I've been a cord cutter, I got this device and that device, what is the best um, streaming media player out there for cord cutters? And I struggle a lot with this because I always have to say, well, tell me what you want from it. What are you looking for? What services do you want? Um, because I don't think there's one definite 100%, you know, this is good for everybody, media player out there. There's many different devices that are good for different people for different reasons. Um, now, I do personally believe that cord cutting in the end comes down to getting the content you want, when you want it, and how you want it. So content access is the number one thing I look at. Um, the next one down is price. Um, so those affect a lot of my reviews and how I look at things. Um, now, without question, Roku has the largest library of video content out there. I know other services will say, well, we got 2,000 apps also. The Apple TV just came out. We have 2,000 apps on the um, Apple TV. Uh, but how many of them are video apps like Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, YouTube, etc.? And how many of them are like, hey, here's the 600th different version of a weather app that'll display the temp on your um, TV, or here's a photo slideshow app, and so forth. So I look at it, it's like, okay, show me the apps that show me movies and TV shows, and that's why I can sit around and look at it. And Roku's by far ahead in that. Not only does it have um, Netflix, all the bigs, but it's got um, tons of content stores to give you options. Google Play's there, Amazon Video, Voodoo, um, Fandango now, which you probably remember as MGO, but it's now called Fandango. Um, and they go on and on. I could give you about 20 other uh, stores you can go physically buy content in. And it also has a ton of free content. A Roku, by far, if you want access to free legal content, legal being the big word there, Roku's by far the leader on it. So that's there, but hey, I own all my content on iTunes. Well, then you probably want the Apple TV. Um, if you've watched all these um, Luke's offices in the past, you notice that I came down pretty hard on the Apple TV saying I cannot recommend it. Yes, they did add Sling TV since then, but I still struggle to recommend it. The price is triple what you can get a comparable powered uh, Roku device for. You can get a Roku stick for less than 50 bucks, uh, and but the Apple TV, with similar specs on power um, and processing and all that RAM comes in at 150. Um, so I struggle with that. And the hard drive isn't accessible for streaming. It only works for gaming, so I don't really consider that there. Um, but if it, hey, if you own most of your content on Amazon, Roku access that, but the Fire TV is really built for Amazon video. That's the main focus of it. So 99% of what you do is on Amazon, Fire TV may be the best fit for you. It also, the Fire TV has one of the best voice searches in streaming media players that I've ever used with more and more features being added. So if voice is important to you, the Fire TV is what you want. Um, if gaming is what you want, the Nvidia Shield is probably where you want to go. A great gaming um, device um, with great 4K, UHD, you know, Ultra HD Premium, whatever they call it now, um, picture. So the best picture possible right there good gaming controller, uh, very uh, powerful processor. So, man, you know, it really comes out of what you want. Does it have the apps you want? Does it have the features you want? Uh, I think for most core cards that say, hey, when they come to me, I just want to stream Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, maybe a couple other services like that, Twitch or YouTube. Roku's gonna meet most people's um, needs. 
and their $50 stick right now with a quad core processor is probably what most people need. But there's many other people out there that can say, hey, I need other ones. I, you know, I don't necessarily care about most content. I really want voice search. I really want iTunes. You know, then the Fire TV or I, Apple TV would be what you want. Do your research. I can't answer what the best device is for everybody. I can just tell you how I approach it and what the pros and cons of each ones are. So I hope that helps. Um, let's dive into questions real quick. Now, every week I ask over at the Cord Cutters uh, Facebook page here, let me jump back to it, what the best or what questions you may have. And every, I do my best to answer them right there in the um, core cutting and tech support page, which I'll link to in the bottom of the video here. Uh, but each week I try to answer them here. So if you ask, I'll answer them here. Sorry about that, here it is. I somehow lost my place on that. Um, I get asked a lot of questions um, about how many core cutters they are. And this week, Philip asked, um, how many strong are we? How many core cutters are there? And that's tough to answer. Uh, just like the streaming video question or player. Uh, but the reason it's tough to um, answer exactly how many core cards there are is because it's hard to track people. And let's say my roommate and I live here. Let's say I still have a roommate and I move out. He keeps cable, but I move into a new apartment and do not buy cable. So now I'm a cord cutter, but there's no actual cancellation of a um, Comcast account, for instance. Um, cord nevers, you know, that's a big issue there. There's also issues of um, accurate reporting, I think has been a big one. Um, a lot of companies are kind of lumping in, like Sling TV subscribers, there's been a lot of talk that Dish is counting them into their Dish customer numbers when they report them. Um, and that's gonna become bigger as Comcast and Charter and other places are rolling out streaming services. Now, a lot of research has been done on it and I've heard a lot of numbers quoted between 10 and 20 million um, core cutters are right now. I can tell you core cutting is picking up speed and uh, ESPN, which is included in pretty much every cable package right now, is losing over 10,000 subscribers every day on average in 2016. So about, let's say 5,000 of those are core cutters. So there's about, let's say 5,000 new core cutters every day. Uh, now with that said, there's still about 90 million cable subscribers out there for cable TV. Um, so I call those people future readers of the block, future core cutters. So we got a long ways to go, but we're growing. There's a substantial market base right there. And all you have to do is look at the rush of services, Hulu, DirecTV, YouTube, the list goes on and on. Um, SFN TV now, Vidgo, they're all rushing to bring new services to core cutters because they see it as a growing market where money can be made. And that's capitalism, it's good for us. Competition is good for core cutters and the strength of the competition shows you there's a lot of core cutters out there. Um, let's take a look at a couple others. Um, can I explain the Tableau DVR? This will be the last question today. I had to um, look that one up. Rhonda asked this and the Tableau DVR is a great DVR for core cutters. There's a couple other good ones out there TiVo, of course, the granddaddy of DVRs is out there. Channel Master is another one. Um, doesn't have all the features of a Tableau, which I'll explain in a minute, but doesn't charge a monthly fee. You just plug it right in. Um, but Tableau stands out for a couple reasons. Um, it networks through your home Wi-Fi, which is nice because you can put it anywhere in your house that you get a good antenna um, signal with your over-the-air TV. And then you can access it on a Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV. Several smart TVs have apps for it too and that allow you to watch your local TV stream through your home network. So one in 10 in your house can access all um, you know, devices wherever you are. If you're in the bedroom, you can access the antenna. I do this, the one in my office is the best place, second floor, upstairs, facing the direction I want. But my bedroom typically doesn't get good over um, the air reception. If you have a family room in the basement, typically a bad place to put antennas in your basement. Um, the Tableau does that. It also allows you to, of course, record, play back, but you can access your content on the road wherever you are. And that's a great feature right there. So the Tableau is kind of like a sling box. So wherever you are, through your, if you subscribe to their service, you can watch it on your phone, on your tablet, um, on your laptop, if you've linked them back at home before, and you can record it, you can access it anywhere in your house. 
it really is a nice device. The Channel Master is another one out there. It just plugs into your TV with an HDMI cable. Only works on one TV is the downside. Um, doesn't have the networking of a Tableau, uh, but there's a lot of options out there. So cord, um, I'll also link at the bottom uh, our DVR buyer's guide for cord cutters in the show notes to help you pick the right DVR. Well, I hope this video helped. I think I went out a while, but it's a complicated subject here. Do my best. Questions on this, comments, your experience, uh, what's your favorite device? Leave them on our, our uh, comments over at cordcardsnews.com or on YouTube. And please subscribe.